to the sixth Sunday of Easter as we're back in our building. Praise God. It's so good to see all of your faces and hear your voices again. We've come a long, long way by faith, haven't we? Knowing that God is with us all the way. Things are now just opening up here in Missouri, but we know that there are many places around our country that where things are still shut down and people are struggling in a mighty way. We need to continue to pray for those folks. Let's bow our heads today and give thanks to God and to pray. Oh, Father God, we come giving you praise for your steadfast love and provision. Our country and the world is in great pain as the virus and is, is still ravaging and people are being oppressed in many, many, many ways. You told us to put our faith in you alone and not in ideologies and not in organizations or politics or even human beings. You alone know the plans that you have for us and so we trust in you completely. We stand on your promises and we look to you for deliverance. Father God, continue to heal those who are ill and comfort those who are grieving and give courage to those that are downtrodden. Give us grace to continue this walk by faith, trusting you no matter what. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Please stand while we sing. Stand up for Jesus. Page 514 in your red hymnals. 514.
Please remain standing as we share the responsive reading together. It's found on page 748 in the hymnal. Page 748. Just read responsibly. The Lord is my chosen portion uh, and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a glorious heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also dwells secure. For you do not give me up to shield, or let your documents be the gift. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us continue to sing praises of our Lord. Now if you'll turn into Black Hymn Hymnals to page 2066. Praise the name of Jesus. Some may have had training wheels and some may have not. 
and then if you didn't have training wheels, you got up on it, and you tried to go, what happened? I went into a bush. So, one of us, I'm sure all of us, had a crony. A mom, or a dad, or, or an uncle, or somebody. You got on your bike, and they held on to the back of the seat, right? And they said, pedal, pedal, pedal. So you start pedaling, and they're pushing the bike along with you, right? And you felt pretty good, and you're pedaling. You're still back there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're still back there, and you're pedaling. Pretty soon, Dad probably did, just let go, didn't say. But Dad kept running right along. And you felt pretty good, because you thought Dad was still holding on to the seat. Because you could hear Dad's footsteps right there with you while you're paddling, right? Dad was running along, and you felt safe on your bike, didn't you? That's how God walks with us. If we try to go alone and we get on our bike, we're going to fall over, right? Or run into the bush like I did. Or the porch. Um, Mr. Randy, come to the porch. Yep. See, there you go. <laughs> Try to do it without God and you're going to fail. He's going to walk with us. He'll even run with us while we're running. He'll run alongside of us when we're riding our bikes, when we're driving in our car. The mistake we make is when we try to do it without God with us. And that's what sets us apart because our God walks with us on this earth. He walks with us and he talks with us and he sits with us and he sleeps with us. And we've got to remember every day, if we try to do it on our own, we're probably going to get skinned knees. And we don't want to wait and call for God to be with us after we've got the skinned knees. We want to say, God, I want you to walk with me every day. And we know that our God will walk with us every day, right? 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 right. right. Say a prayer with me, kids. We can't hold our hands in our circle anymore, but we can hold our hands out like we're holding hands in our circle, okay? So hold your hands out like we're in our circle. Lord Jesus, we love you so much, and we know that you walk with us to school, and you walk with us in Walmart, and you walk with us when we play outside, and help us to remember to always, always have you walking with us every day. And all God's little children said really loud, Amen. Thank you. We're going to be celebrating our offering, but we have to do it in a different way. Uh, we have a plate in the back door there as you come in and go out. But we're going to ask God to bless us in, a, in a, bless our offering in advance. Let's stand and sing our doxology and ask God to bless His, bless our offerings that are coming His way.
Things are different, things are strange. But thank you that you are the same now, today, yesterday, and forever. Lord, continue to be with our, our, our state and our, and our community as we begin to open. Take away all the fear that has been pounded in our heads day and night. Show us what you want us to do. Help us to remember that no matter what, you have given us a mission, and that is to tell that Jesus Christ came, and he lived, and he died, and he rose again, so we can have eternal life. Help us to remember to be faithful in our calling. And you said in your word that your love casts out all fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of disease, fear of evil. God, you are good. And you made us in your image, and you said we are good. And Lord, your spirit is in those who believe in you. And you guide us, and you direct us each and every day. Give us strength and courage. Give us faith to trust in you. Continue to be with those that are sick and afflicted. Continue to be with those that are listening on the internet and those that are home. And Lord, we just ask the blessing on all of us here, Lord, that are reaching out to you, offering ourselves as a sacrifice of praise to you. You told us to worship you in spirit and truth. And we thank you, Father, that your presence is here with us right now. We thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Brent is going to favor us with a song this morning. This is a song that I sang at my mom's funeral. She died five years ago last month. And this month, I think she would have been 105. Her birthday was on 22nd. So Patty and I sang this at mom's funeral. And we didn't have any music that day. And I'm not going to sing it with music today. So say a little prayer if this comes out OK. There is coming a day when the heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eyes. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day. 
song of hope. We needed that, didn't we? This morning, we're going to be talking about being in the presence of God. What does it mean to be in the presence of God? And how can we know that we are in God's presence? <clears throat> what happens if we're not in the presence of God? We know that God is all around us, but quite often we don't recognize him. I wonder if we are ever in total awe when we're in the presence of God. Now, I don't know if this story is true, but the urban legend has it that in 1990, a woman went into a Hagen Doss ice cream shop in Kansas City, Missouri, for an ice cream cone. As she was ordering, she heard another customer come in in the back door. She placed her order and turned around to see the face of Paul Newman. Her knees began to shake. Her knees almost buckled. She finished paying. She quickly grabbed her thing, she thought, and ran out the door, and her heart was just a pounding. When finally she just suddenly realized that she didn't have her ice cream cone. <laughs> so she decided she would turn right around and go back and get her ice cream cone when who was coming out the door but Paul Newman. He said, I bet you're going in for your ice cream cone, aren't you? And she was so nervous, she couldn't even say anything. She just went, yeah, yeah. And he said, well, ma'am is in your purse along with your money. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time we were in the presence of God and were so in awe that our knees buckled and we forgot what we were doing? We forgot where we were. We got forgotten who was around us. We forgot the dishes. We forgot the bills. We forgot COVID. We forgot where we put our ice cream cone. Psalm 1611 tells us this, that when we're in the presence of God, we have the fullness of joy. That means you cannot be happier anywhere else as you are when you are in the presence of God and you know it. More often than not, in our busy world with so many things pulling at us and so many things to take the focus off of God, we get wrapped up in what's going on around us. We get wrapped up in our jobs and all the things that we're trying to do, connecting all of the dots. And we try to survive without the warmth of God's Holy Spirit. Sometimes we even ignore the gifts that he's given to us to even make a living. And either we do one or two things. We grumble and complain and blame God for the circumstances. Or when we stop and sit in God's presence, sometimes we become overcome with his presence. We discover that we simply cannot go forward without God. We try and try, but we fail over and over again. In fact, when we realize that the presence of God, of God is with us and he wants the best for us, we don't want to go anywhere without God. Listen to this passage from Exodus as God and Moses are having a conversation. It's from Exodus 33. Moses said to the Lord, You've been telling me to lead these people, but you have not told me yet who's going to go with me. You have said, I know you by my name, and you have, been, have shown favor with me. And if you're pleased with me, teach me your way so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember, this, is, this nation is your people. And the Lord replied, my presence will go with you. I will give you rest. Then Moses said something that we have to pay attention to. God, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us out. Moses was about to lead the people out of Egypt, and Moses begged God, if your presence is not with us, don't let us go. Moses 
misunderstood that without God's presence, the path is impossible. The same is true for you and me all these generations later. The path that you and I have been set on is absolutely impossible without God. In fact, Jesus told us without him, it's impossible. Faith in God, whether we see him or not, is absolutely essential for our Christian walk. Knowing that God is with us, whether we can see him or not, is absolutely essential for everything that we go through. Now, we learned last week that God is not human. He's not man or woman. He's not like you and me. The Bible said God is spirit. And the Bible tells us that God is everywhere at the same time. He knows all things. He sees all things. He understands all things. God creates and he sustains and he provides and he fortifies us. The Bible tells us that God has always been and God will always be. He's in all things and through all things. He's all powerful. He has all authority. There is absolutely nowhere on earth or in the universe that you and I can go that we can get out of God's presence. He knows where we're at every second of the day and night. God is sovereign. He's the ultimate ruler over absolutely everything. Yet, this all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing God wants a personal, intimate relationship with you and me. I found that absolutely amazing. And it's kind of hard to comprehend. God desires that you and I be in his presence all the time. He wants us to converse with him, have a conversation, tell him everything. And he wants us to listen to him. Why does God want that for us? It's because God created us to love us, to be with him forever. And he wants us to love him in return. He wants us to have the joy of being in his presence. All through the Bible, which is God's love letter to us, we are made of the reality of God. The reality that he is with us always. And Jesus said, I'll be with you to the end of the age. In 1 Peter 2, we find these words. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that we may declare the praise of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. The presence of God is the person of God himself revealed to us at a specific time for a specific purpose. Sometimes we feel him and sometimes we don't. But God is with us whether we feel him or not. We never ever lose the reality of God's presence no matter how badly we fail, no matter how much we sin. In fact, we can never sink so low as to banish God's presence from us. Oh, we can anger God because of our sin, that's for sure. And we can make it necessary for God to punish us just like with his little children. But true believers never, ever lose the presence of God because God is always with us. I don't know about you, but that gives me assurance. But listen carefully. While we may never lose the reality of God's presence, we can lose the sense of of his presence. Now, how can that possibly be? Sometimes things are just not right in our heart and we decide to get off the path that God has put us on and want to go our own way. And then after we make our mistakes and we wonder, God, where are you? It's not that God has left, it's that we have left 
the path that he's put us on. But God in his mercy and love has told us if we would just turn to him and repent, he'll set us right back on that path and then pretty soon we have that intimate personal relationship with him and we know his presence is with us. You know, the best place to be in his presence is in God's word. This is the living word of God. And when you open up the pages, he makes his presence known to us as we read the words meant for our hearts and our minds and our lives. But if there's sin in our lives, sin twists things and perverses what was once sacred. Wickedness and injustice and sometimes immorality in our lives make us feel that God is not with us. Another great place to be in the presence of God is on our knees in prayer. The moment you call out God's name in prayer, you are at the throne of grace. You are at the feet of Jesus. You are in the presence of Almighty God. That's an awesome place to be, isn't it? We find the first examples of being in God's presence way back in Genesis. When the Bible tells us that God created man and woman in his image, and he gave them uh, dominion over all the world, and he placed them in this beautiful garden, paradise, and, and the Bible tells us that every single day, Adam and Eve walked in the presence of God, and they conversed in holy conversations constantly. God listening to them, and they listening to God. It was the perfect relationship. Perfect communion, perfect intimacy, the perfect peace, the perfect tranquility. They had everything they needed, but they were comfortable in their skin. They were unashamed of their physical bodies. Everything that Adam and Eve had was good. But well, we know what happened, don't we? The Bible tells us the serpent was more cunning than any animal, and we know that Satan entered that serpent, and he began to try to mess up that perfect tranquility, that perfect intimate relationship, to sever the created from the creator, to break the presence of God with humanity. Through the serpent, we see the first deception. He said, now God didn't really tell you you couldn't eat off that tree. God knows if you eat off that tree, you're going to be gods like him. We see the first lie where Satan told them, you shall not surely die. We further see the first temptation to to disobey God. The seed of mistrust of God, and God was planted and Adam and Eve took the bait. In an instant, what was good and perfect turned sour. In an instant, that communion with God was severed. The moment they disobeyed, they experienced shame. Not shame for what they did, but because their eyes were open to evil, suddenly they saw themselves in their nakedness and they hid from God. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid themselves from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to man and said, Where are you? And he answered, Well, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat? The scene is kind of pathetic, isn't it? Once they had walked in the joy of God's presence, and now they were shaking in fear and in terror of being wrong in the eyes of God. God could have destroyed them right then and there and made a new set. But in God's love and mercy, he didn't destroy them, but he called them into his presence. Now, if we read this passage, we find out there is no repentance from Adam and Eve. Eve blamed the serpent, and Adam blamed the woman. 
And I had to send them away from his presence to keep them from eating the tree of life and then be evil every day of their life, just like Satan's evil every day of his life. Human beings have been running from and running to God ever since. We run from his presence because we want to do things our own way, yet we run to him without realizing it when we try to fill our lives with anything and everything to fill that void in there that's meant for God and God alone. We're longing for that tranquil place we once had in the presence of God. And just like Adam and Eve, God always calls us back into his presence. Eventually, he would send his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to bring us back into that holy place in God's presence. And we know that happens when you and I finally realize that we are sinners in need of saving and we surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ and he saves us and he brings us back into that holy, perfect relationship in the presence of God. And then God's Holy Spirit nurtures us every single day until the day God calls us home. Now listen, we still live in a fallen world even though we are saved and we are Christians. Even when we become a child of God, there are times in every child of God's life, even in the life of pastors, when we don't feel like the presence of God is there. When we ask questions like, where are you, God? What are you doing? What do you want from me? We all have spiritual leanness sometimes because we live in a world that's called, constantly pulling us right and left and trying to get us off the path. There's all kinds of voices calling to us. There are many distractions in the world, and we all can list them. All kinds of distractions. They keep us out of the Word and off of our knees and out of church. We won't always feel God's presence, but we will always know by faith that God is always with us. Do you know why? Because God said so. God said, I will always be with you. And nothing can snatch you out of my hand. Nothing can take you out of my presence. In 1 Peter, again, we read these words. Though you have not seen God, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible, glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, which is the salvation of your soul. You know, many Christians act gloomy and dejected when they cannot feel the presence of God. And we know feelings are not always fact. Sometimes we're jealous, but we don't have any fact to back it up. But God has said he's always with us. Sometimes we don't feel the presence of God because we might be going through a time of testing to grow us up and mature us in the name of Christ. And sometimes we step out of God's will. But the fellowship is so sweet for those who walk in with the Lord in obedience and faith. We don't want to have opposition with God like Adam and Eve did in the garden. They had opposition from God the moment they disobeyed and they had to be cast out of that beautiful place to struggle like the rest of us. God's word sustains us in times of trial. And I bet if I asked every one of you, you could tell, give me an example of how God's word and prayer has got you through this last seven and eight weeks. In Nehemiah 8.10, Nehemiah tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. When we love God, no matter whether we can see him or not, when we trust him, no matter what, we have joy inside that no matter what's going on around us, we feel secure in God because God's presence never leaves us. James, the brother of Jesus, wrote these words. He said this, Consider pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, 
Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to everyone without finding fault, and it will be given to him. That's powerful words, isn't it? First say, yes, we're going to have trials, but yes, we can trust in God. And even in the trouble, we're going to have joy when we believe without a doubt that God's presence is with us and never leaves us. Amen? Amen. The presence of God is with us. And Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. He said, I will be with you to the end of the age. And he said, believe in God, believe also in me. We have the assurance that God is with us. Moses knew the truth. That's why he said, he begged, God, if your presence is not with us, do not let us go. Let's bow our heads and pray, shall we? Oh, Father God, thank you that your presence is always with us. You're always calling us to yourself. Forgive us for those times that we ignore you and try to do things all by ourselves and we get caught up in all the voices that we hear on TV and all the fear that, that is being pushed down our throats, Father. You have said your love for us is everlasting and your truth endures to all generations. You are all we need. From the beginning, you asked us to walk with you and talk with you and you said that you would call us your own. You never give up on us. Thank you, God. Send your presence with us as we simply cannot go by ourselves. One more step. We give you praise and glory in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We can have fellowship with Jesus all week long. When we learn on on him, let's stand and sing, leaning on the everlasting arms. Be page 133 of the Red Hymnals.